being a pharmacist reminds me of growing up as a middle child. So let's talk about Middletons for a minute. You know, those of us born second. Well, growing up, my family lived up to the common expression. The older sibling makes the rules, the middle child keeps the rules, and the younger one breaks the rules. Growing up, this was definitely me. I grew up as the people pleaser, the peacemaker, the quiet achiever. Here are some photos of myself with my older sister and my younger brother. And I'd like to share with you a beloved family anecdote that often gets toted out at parties. So we went camping with some close friends. It was one of those beach campgrounds that had the communal shower blocks. It was late one evening and all of us kids were told to go to bed. Well, my older sister and the other older children decided that this didn't apply to them. They were more mature. So they were out playing games, shrieking around the campground and getting into trouble for waking everyone up. Simultaneously, my younger brother and his best mate were getting into trouble with the camp security as they decided that they wanted to go surfing. So they went to the shower block, they plugged up all the drains, turned on all the taps and flooded the place. Where was I in this story? Well, I was doing what I was told. I was asleep in the tent. Do you know what happens when the story is shared at parties? Well, creative license gives us permission to leave the boring bits out of a story, to make sure it's really punchy. Well, in this example, that's my existence in the story. Maybe this perception of reality is why I subconsciously joined the pharmacy profession, to be a part of a family of Middletons, to be with others that understand my middle child syndrome. As Middletons, I find that we are often stuck in the middle and we struggle with our identity. We don't neatly fit into any one group or category. We're not the oldest or the smartest or the youngest or the funniest. And I find that as pharmacists, this is also true. We don't neatly fit into any one group of the healthcare sector. We straddle across it all. We are a part of the medical team. We are our patients' advocates. We provide public health services. We're a staple in the community. But like the middle child, as pharmacists, we crave the recognition and the attention for the diverse roles and services that we provide. But the challenge is we are often forgotten and we are underutilized and underappreciated, especially when a disaster or emergency happens. But before I get to disasters and how we wouldn't survive them without our pharmacists, I can hear some of you wondering that I must be exaggerating because when you think of a pharmacist, you think of the person in the white lab coat standing at the back of the store, counting pills and putting a label on a box. <sighs> Isn't that a loaded statement that grates at the core of every pharmacist? But I don't blame you. I don't blame you for not realizing that we have evolved well beyond this stereotype. As pharmacists and the pharmacy organizations that represent us, we don't contradict this narrative. Although as Middletons, we crave that recognition and attention for the roles we provide, another classic trait of ours is our self-esteem issues. As pharmacists, we have an identity crisis as we try and catch up to that trailblazing older sibling while simultaneously trying to carve out our place in our healthcare family. As pharmacists, we lack the confidence to advocate for ourselves and quite often our voices are lost in the story just like my family's anecdote. This is especially true when it comes to disaster planning and emergency management. Often pharmacists are forgotten and only thought of after a crisis has struck and we start thinking about the drugs and the logistics of getting them. But this is not the whole story. My colleagues have done much more to help us and our communities when we are in need. So I'm here to tell you the story, the story of the unsung heroes. The story of how we wouldn't survive a disaster without our pharmacists. So I was speaking to a pharmacist and they told me this. They had a patient come to them at some hurricane and the pharmacist looked down at the patient's foot and it just looked horrible. It smelled pretty bad too. The patient came just because they didn't have any more prescriptions. The pharmacist asked the patient, how did you let your foot get so bad? The patient responded, when the hurricane came, it knocked down my house and it killed my wife. He had this scruffy little dog with him. 
and he said, all I have left in this world is this little dog. And I was scared that if I came here, you would take my dog away. So that's where you as a pharmacist, you started out with a prescription, but you ended up saving somebody's life. Pharmacists are a reliable, accessible and available healthcare service. You know, the ones we turn to when it's Friday night and our child has spiked a temperature. Or it's Sunday morning and our elderly parent has taken their last dose of their medication but forgotten to get it refilled. These characteristics are even more important when it comes to a disaster or emergency that impacts our community. Did you know that pharmacists are ranked one of the most trusted professions? They are also the third largest healthcare provider. By including pharmacists in disaster planning, we are making our community safer and stronger to withstand the impacts of disasters when they happen. Pharmacists in emergencies are an untapped and underutilized healthcare resource. Individuals I've worked with have shared countless stories of how they've been there for us in our communities. And I'm sure you have stories of your own. For example, in 2019, a Michigan pharmacist delivered medications to patients by snowmobile during a snowstorm. Or in 2020, French and Spanish pharmacists provided a safe haven for women fleeing domestic violence during the lockdowns of the COVID-19 pandemic. Or pharmacy wholesalers that coordinated with pharmacies and the state emergency support teams to ensure essential medicines were provided to those cut off from floodwaters. Or Australian pharmacists providing medications and first aid and general supplies to evacuees fleeing wildfires with only the clothes on their back. Or pharmacists that worked during Hurricane Sandy in the United States and Cyclone Debbie in Australia that continued to provide opioid replacement therapies to patients in the aftermath of the storm. How often do we think of these examples when we think of what pharmacists do? Or to put it another way, how often do we as pharmacists promote and advocate for these different diverse roles and services that we provide? Maybe I've convinced you that we have evolved beyond this stereotype, that pharmacists are an essential service and part of the essential team. But let's switch gears for a minute. I'd like to play a game, a game that we are all familiar with. So imagine that you were evacuated to a deserted island. What are the three things that you would take with you? Did you consider your medications? If not, that's okay, because your pharmacist will be there and will continue to be there for you during any crisis. But I want to focus my talk on one recent event that we are all too familiar with, the COVID-19 pandemic. Pharmacists have once again stepped up to meet the needs of our community. They have continued to provide our steady, reliable and accessible healthcare services. My team and I surveyed 740 Canadian frontline pharmacists in the early phase of the pandemic about the roles and experiences that they were providing. What was interesting was over 70% of them said that they had patients coming to them that were avoiding other aspects of the healthcare system out of fear of contracting the COVID infection. Also over 50% of these pharmacists said that they had members of the community coming to them to seek emotional and psychological support, as well as a reliable source of information about the emerging nature of the pandemic. Another study conducted by the team and I looked at the global picture of frontline pharmacists and the roles and services that they provide. The most commonly discussed role was interprofessional collaboration. Pharmacists work as patient advocates and they work in tandem with the other health professions to ensure that we all meet the patient's needs and goals. Another highly discussed role was education. And this is a core skill of pharmacists. We are not only experts in evaluating evidence, like evaluating the studies for COVID treatments, but also in tailoring our communication to the audience that we are a part of. For example, we can talk medical language to our colleagues we can talk policy to governments and we can talk in an understandable and relatable language to our patients and our community members. This is a true strength of us as Middletons as we straddle across the diverse areas and sectors of the healthcare system. 
During the COVID-19 pandemic, pharmacists took this role to a whole new level. Pharmacists were finding creative and innovative ways to share this information with everyone. They were broadcasting on the radio and in television. Pharmacists have also been providing numerous public health care roles with asymptomatic COVID screening and testing, COVID vaccinations, managing our PPE supplies and combating misinformation around COVID transmission and treatments. Pharmacists' more established roles have also been highly publicised, with pharmacists compounding hand sanitizer and managing our drug shortages. What I find truly fascinating about the COVID-19 pandemic is the widespread acceptance and recognition of the amazing hard work that our frontline pharmacists have been achieving since day one of this pandemic. Historically, this has not been the case in previous disasters. Pharmacists have not received this recognition. So what makes COVID different? We theorise that the nature of COVID with its global scale of impact and the prolonged duration of this pandemic that has required pharmacists to continue to adapt and innovate their roles and services is acting as a catalyst for pharmacists' identity change. Pharmacists are finally receiving their long-held desire of their middle child. The confirmation that they have an important role to play in public health and emergencies. This is a new era for pharmacy. COVID-19 has acted as a catalyst for the sustained change in how we view our pharmacy profession. The next evolutionary step is for pharmacists to be better integrated into disaster planning and emergency management. As Padula and Colic stated, COVID-19 has removed the healthcare pecking order. The healthcare hierarchy has been leveled because everyone was required to wear the same PPE and the same uniforms. We are all equal. We are all a part of the healthcare team. This has opened up the opportunity for us as pharmacists to reimagine who we are and where we fit within the healthcare family. With the impact of COVID dwindling down, why is it important for us to keep talking about this? Well, the importance to effective emergency management is planning. We need to make sure that we test our response and recovery plans, that we build the collaborative relationships with those around us, so we know who in the team is available, what to expect from each other, and what expertise we bring to the table. To not let the last 18 months that we have all endured go to waste, I have a few actions for us to consider. Firstly, as community members, we can continue to rely on our pharmacists to support us during any crisis. Secondly, our governments. Our governments can help ensure that the pharmacist roles that are being provided are well supported by pharmacy legislation and funding arrangements. And then lastly, my fellow pharmacists and the pharmacy organisations that represent us. We need to advocate and promote the diverse roles and services that we perform and highlight how we go above and beyond for our communities when they are in need. So I'm here to say that we can't let this opportunity go to waste. We must honour the lessons that we have learnt during this pandemic. Our pharmacists need to be included in our disaster planning to make our communities safer. Together, we can strengthen our healthcare system and our communities to withstand any disaster or emergency. Our pharmacists can no longer be left out of our stories.